I kept on going But I saw fall all pretend And I lost any idea of coming home Because I don't know But I surely need to roam Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new episode of The Seduction Show. I'm your host Hans Komein and today we have a very special guest. Uh, we have Brian Begin. I hope I pronounced it right. I only uh, be- Bayesian, but it was close. Bayesian, because <laughs> I only yeah. call you by your first name, Brian. Um, I have a habit of not correcting people, so a lot of people call me Begin or, or uh, Bayesian. Bayesian. And I just whatever, you know, and so... And so now, now, now nobody's got it right anymore. <laughs> right. I won't ever forget it. I met right. Brian a couple of years ago when uh, working with Zan on the Arza Marata, and he came in and talked a couple of times to our, uh, our group gatherings. And he always struck me as a very uh, masculine man um, with uh, uh, an eye for the sacred. <laughs> and, uh, and so as I'm as I'm doing this series on men that inspire me, men also I would like to get to know a little bit better and especially their work. It's only fitting that I talk to Brian. And so I called him up, he accepted, and I'm very excited that we get this hour here, Brian, to, uh, for me to understand you a little bit better, to understand your work, understand the questions that you're sitting in, what you're offering, how you're doing your work, and then maybe that way if people... Uh, my following, my people that follow me resonate with it, that they can get in contact with you and maybe do some work with you. Well, that's awesome. I appreciate it. And I, I love podcasts and I love, ex- it's just a great opportunity to sit down and really just have a conversation and explore ideas, mm-hmm. which, which to me is, is, I don't know. I just love doing it. You know, the right. depth of something, how, how deep can we get with these topics? And right. stuff like that. Speaking of which, what is it, what is like, the, the question that you're sitting in today on a personal level or even on, on a coaching, whatever level that you're, that you're sitting in the most that you're wondering about? Uh, good question. Um, I'm always sitting in a question. So that's a, that's a great question. But um, uh, I was literally uh, just doing a little bit of a training with some, um, uh, some of our, what we call our releasing mastery students and, and some of my coaches right before I spoke to you. Mm-hmm. And uh, the thing I've been really exploring lately is how to, in a really grounded, solid, masculine way, uh, become more expressive, louder, bolder, mm-hmm. uh, have a bigger presence with becoming what I call stay pumped. You know, you ever see those guys who are like, they pumped up their energy so much that they're not present anymore. They're kind of racing all over the place. Uh-huh. How to become a really big energy in a room while really holding your presence and holding your groundedness and not lose, not become, not start racing inside. And uh-huh. So we've been developing exercises and ideas around that uh, more and more and just talking to the guys about it. And what I found is when you do that, this, this willingness to be seen is a big part of it. This ability uh-huh. to be seen by strangers in public and, and fear being, you know, Oh, that guy's being loud. That guy's talking too much. That guy's talking that girl. What if, that guy's being too bold, you know, mm. and being judged. Uh, what it does is it has a huge effect on your freedom from outcome, your self esteem, your personal power, you know, just being willing to be seen by people and not giving right. a damn. And so, are you, are you like the answers to that are, are they in like the, the, the inner work that you just described or are you all also thinking about like techniques of, I don't know, projection of voice or are you, or is it more like the inner work? Well, it's, it's both, but the inner work is, um, the real change happens on the inner, but then you see it manifest in the outer. If you're not seeing it manifest in the outer, then the way you're being, the way people are responding to you, then you really haven't completed the work on the inner. So mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I'm always, to me it's like, um, it's like there has to be a circuit between the inner and outer and they have to be in balance and constant communication to create a real change. Right. And then if you, if you go all inner and shut off the outer, you kind of get stuck. And yes. then, uh, and if you go all outer, you kind of end up in a race pushing, trying to make stuff happen in the world. Mm. And so you, the exercises you devise are, are, are or touching upon both. Yeah. The idea is to, because in my mind, in, if you really go deep, just like every, almost, almost everything is, has, is spiritual or nothing spiritual. Everything is helping your growth or nothing's helping your growth. Everything 
kind of almost like the inner is the outer, mm -hmm. you know, and the outer is the inner and we at the deepest levels. And you start to see that, uh, that you're, that if you're seeing it around you, it's all part of your consciousness. So, mm -hmm. you know, so it has to play a huge part in that connection. Um, and if we're not like, I always look at, I look at nature for a lot of answers and if mm. lake is not, um, let's say we take a lake that's, that stops, uh, being fed in by a river or stops a certain the, the water inside the lake, it gets kind of cut off from the hole. Mm -hmm. It'll stagnate. Everything starts dying in that lake and it starts, mm -hmm. it, it kind of loses its life. So everything has to be, there has to be a constant, uh, reciprocal or, or circulatory nature to everything, even the energy in your body to the external world and back to the internal world or from you to other people and back at, and back. Otherwise you end up living in a little bubble by yourself. And that's, that's when your ego really develops. Uh -huh. Interesting. When you, when you say these are questions you had and you, and you develop exercises that you use in, in coaching, I was wondering, because I, I don't really know your story or these kind of like, were, were, the, the things you're offering right now, were they, were they questions that you wanted to answer for yourself in your own journey and then in a way um, could offer that knowledge and that growth that you've seen for yourself to other people? That's the way it started out, yes. Uh -huh. um, in the beginning, I had a lot of questions to change. I wanted to change my own life. I was super shy, super introverted, couldn't talk uh -huh. to people. I was scared of the world. I was borderline agoraphobic as a child, very sickly too. I had a lot of oh. medical problems. It was a sign of just all kinds of stuff, but that's a story in itself. I could go through that for days, but um, the day, the climbing out of that really changed me a lot. And so I started mm -hmm. working with people, but then I'm, I'm, I became so good at seeing the subtle, like little tiny things that need shifting. And that's kind of, that's my forte, I think, is, uh, is the ability to is read the abstract and turn it into something that makes sense. Uh -huh. um, that uh, when I got started getting a lot of really complex students that had deep issues too, some that didn't, weren't the same as mine, I started asking a lot of questions. How do I get this person's change? That, that's mm -hmm. meditation I do all the time. If I'm doing a week-long program and I've got a student in there that's really difficult, yeah, I'll go. I'll go back to my room at night and meditate on the what does this student need to change, oh, you know, and yeah. ideas will come. To me. And that's how I, I continue to develop out that way. And then that I tend to apply them to myself for a bit. Mm. Um, I'll mimic the student's behavior and apply it to myself to see what kind of uh, effect it has on me. And and um, you know, I have to be willing to try it on me if I'm going to ask a student to do it. <laughs> right. You know, it's a exploration, a lot of exploration. Hmm. So, so what you're offering to people is really like um, dependent on the person, like what kind of result they want. But what are, what are the, like the, the, say the issues or questions or transformations they're looking for, the, the people that come, that come to you, that come to Fearless Man. I haven't mentioned it yet, but you're the founder of Fearless Man. So what, what, what what do you what do you stand for in the sense of like what kind of issues do you address questions you answer problems you solve for uh, for your people well that's a great question because we do a lot of different stuff um we originally marketed to dating like everybody else and then i i quickly realized early on in my career as a dating coach that all the marketers wanted me to say you know here, here here's the five-step process to get a kiss tonight or get a girl mm -hmm. in bed. Tonight. And I just didn't like any of that. I never did. Mm -hmm. um, so I tell the marketers no. And then I tell them what I wanted to do and they'd always tell me it wasn't going to work. But that was kind of what birthed the whole fearless model was I said, well, let's see if it works. And I did it anyways, mm -hmm. um, which was how to create a sense of personal power in yourself as a man mm -hmm girl because you like yourself you get the girl because you're a compliment to a powerful woman's energy or a confident mm -hmm. woman's energy because you're that confident so really it came down to do you want to feel like you see that hot girl going to the club and she's getting all this so appears to be getting all this value or you see a confident woman and everybody wants to be around her mm -hmm. what if as a man you were a compliment to that energy what if you felt that confident inside yourself that you were deserving mm -hmm. that you deserve the hot woman not that i need to go get one to get validated that I just, I feel that in me before I even move. Mm -hmm. And that's who I started talking to people that really wanted to, to build true confidence and true 
uh, embodiment, true uh, self-love. They re-embody their masculine and, and really love masculine energy and appreciate masculine energy versus mm -hmm. criminalizing it. Uh, and still really love the feminine energy in relation to the masculine, especially healthy feminine, healthy masculine. And, and so that's what I marketed to. And I got clients that wanted to go really deep with that. And mm. uh, they just didn't want to learn to pick up a girl. They come in, I, yeah, I can, that's fine. But if I got, I would say to people, if you could get a girl, the hottest girl, but you still didn't believe in yourself, like you needed her around to believe in yourself or you needed right. another next week how is that worth it and they would all say no they would they would like hit them. yeah they would say wait a minute that's not really what i want right I, of course you don't and um so that's what birthed the work and now we do a lot of work a lot of our clients do come to us for dating relationships We're getting a lot more clients that are searching for how to get a girlfriend how to have a long-term relationship mm -hmm. um and we did get a lot for dating in the beginning. We still do. We get married couples now that want to come in and um, men that are married that want to improve their relationships with their wives. We get um, a lot of guys that want to start businesses now. We do a lot of work with building their uh, confidence in business, goal setting. And we're, we're doing some workshops on money reality this year. Um, so that's in thought of deep internal embodiment, energy work, mm -hmm. um, people losing weight. It's just like we became more of a men's personal growth movement. Right. And now we're slowly starting a women's division for similar stuff because we've had a lot of women asking us to. Huh. So. I, I'm very interested in like the, the, the how, like the format of, you do, of how you do that. I just read uh, Dan Sullivan's Four C's and, and uh, interestingly, he says that the confidence, you know, the, is the, the fourth step and it really is the reward for action and knowing that you could handle it. If you, yeah. if you it, it seems to me that you work towards confidence even on a, like on a, on a, on a prior level as well, a, a deeper level, like oh, I'm not going to say independent of action, but like on a more like inner internally looking kind of way. Is that correct? Or is it, or is yeah. it both? Yeah. yeah. Well, internal, if you can get the confidence, like, let's say I'm sitting on a couch. Mm -hmm. um, do I feel confident sitting on that couch before I even move my pinky? Do I feel really good about myself? Mm -hmm. Like, do I feel like if I'm going to go talk that I am, that I am attractive to women. That's one example, mm -hmm. you know, before I even move my pinky or open my mouth, or do I need to start talking first and get some validation first? Mm -hmm. And that's a big distinction between the two. Yes. Mm -hmm. The action can bring up the stories, which you then process, which then builds more confidence. So the yeah. ultimate you can feel really good about yourself sitting on that couch before you even move. And, but the key is to get to the point where sitting there. Yeah. I know women like me and I don't need to go talk to a girl to validate it. So then when you do get up to go talk to a girl mm -hmm. or you do get up to go do the thing you do, the subcommunication is on point right. because the subcommunication is birthed out of how you feel about yourself. Right. You don't need to take it. It's, it's a natural expression of that internal knowing uh -huh. being. Yeah. What? So every, so you do use action to shift the being, but ultimately we're working towards getting to that being. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine imagine a, a, a guy i'm thinking of certain guys that i that i work with and they they because the, the the what you describe is very common to me too guys think it's about women and then quickly find out it's about themselves you know and the the yeah. the, the self-love or lack thereof the the self-acceptance the confidence all of that and the, what what's interesting in in what i hear you talk is that you you can sit on that couch and find a way to be or become more confident before you go and talk to that girl. And, uh, and I'm very interested in like how you, how you, how you do that. If, if, if that, if it's work on like self-worth is realizing that you're worthy enough or, or, I mean, and you don't have to give me the details of course, but I'm very interested in that, you know, how, how you work with a guy that he, sits on a couch, not feeling, say, confident, uh, and then he works with you and he sits in that same couch and feels completely confident to do that. Well, you have to develop, um, depends on where the guy's at, uh -huh. you know, depending on how I'm going to handle it. Because the guy has to develop a re relationship with his internal world. And if he's uh -huh. going to feel confident, he has to learn to ground himself. And then he has to also learn to feel his emotions and not apologize for what he's feeling. So these mm -hmm. two things are important. Uh -huh. You know, you got to have strong. So if you, let's say I'm sitting on that couch and I'm grounded, but I've got also got my heart shut off and I'm not willing to feel my emotions. Huh. And 
uh, and I feel really solid because what, Hey, nobody's going to, nobody's going to get through this armor plate over my chest, you know, like Iron Man. Well, that's not really confident. Right. You know, that's, that's a fake bravado kind of confidence. So true confidence, you know, you can be sad, you can be happy, you can be lonely, you can be hurt, but you own it. Like, uh-huh. yeah, I'm a man, I can handle it. So that's what we're going towards. And then, uh, and not to hide it from other people. Um, so that's what we're moving slowly towards and every little bit changes your life. Mm. So, uh, um, so the, the key, um, way we work on that is, is, is in the beginning, you know, a lot of guys come in and we, 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 we teach them how to ground. We teach them how to stand in front of different women, not just one and, and learn to ground, contain, connect with their hearts, stay open, um, learn to uh, com- communicate what we, it's called in feeling when they're grounding and their hearts open and we can teach them what feeling looks like. And we use a lot of video cameras and show them videos back of themselves. Mm. Uh, but a lot of it starts with stillness. It starts with the subtlest movements, almost not talking, just eye contact like David Data's work. Mm. But then we're looking at, and then we're playing it back in high def video and looking for the subtlest place their hearts are shutting off or their throats are pulling back or their anxieties running. And a lot of these guys, it amazes me, and I was one of them, they'll be running tons of anxiety and they have no clue. Mm-hmm. Tons of, and they're like, what are you talking about? I'm not afraid. And everybody in the room can see it when we're, especially when we're playing the can- high def videos in slow-mo and, and, and we're looking at the wow. subtle movements and you can see. And when they finally start to see it, it's like a big eye opening thing. They were a fish in water for a lot of what they're feeling. And I was too. And that's why group feedback is so powerful. Right. Wow, that's this interesting. Is a deal for me. Yeah. No. Uh, that's your... one way. And there's many other things we do too, but that's just a start. So that sounds very interesting, Brian. You know, I would mm-hmm. love to. Uh, I mean, with with Zan, we with the Arts of Marata, we also had exercises with uh, hidden cameras, and then play it back, and people would see themselves for the first time. You know, and it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing, and then you have a a feedback of, of people that were present in the room, women that give their feedback and all the other guys that look at the videos and it's, it's life changing, you know, that alone just to see yourself could be completely life changing. And then to have your feedback, tell them, Hey, look at this. That can be, yeah, I can see how powerful that can be. And then from there we do, we have a lot of entrainment meditative processes that teaches them how to release and let go of stored emotional traumas in the body. So as they come up, instead of analyzing them, judging them, we start teaching them how to tear that structure apart that they've created around the old original memories, thoughts, feelings, and start to release them and let them go and claim more um, courage and more personal and stuff like that. So it's all, it's balanced between the two, this, this internal process and then seeing themselves getting triggered, then releasing the trigger, then balance and back and forth until eventually, um, everything starts to settle and they can actually look at these things that used to bother them and almost laugh, sometimes laugh at them. Just be like, Oh, that used to bother me. That's funny. Right. I can see it could be very intense. It can be. Yeah. Especially when somebody's first starting out and has all this repressed emotion and it starts Mm. coming out. There's, there's a lot they feel. Mm. And, uh, but then the reward on the other side, watching life change, watching, how you change is, is huge. Uh-huh. And even, even the process in day to day, let's say we're not in a workshop, but just day to day, when you learn to do these meditative pro- releasing processes and you're, you're walking down the street and something triggers you, it's so great to start, wow, that triggers me. Let me take a deeper look at the emotional drive and break that up. And then uh-huh. move on without, and what we want to do is get a lot of this analytical new agey kind of talk out of it. Like, uh, you know, I, I want them to feel, get beneath all this analyzation to this huh. feel communication with themselves so they can process. Cause if you can't feel your own emotions, you can't let them go. Hmm. And if you have a thought, I don't like myself and it's attached to an emotion, let's say like grief or sadness or loneliness. The only thing holding that thought in place is the grief, sadness or loneliness or the combination. And if you can start to see that and then you can start to see the sensations driving that and start to let those go, then the thought loses all its power. The memory or the image loses all its power. Well, I can see the power of that. And I'm also like, personally, I would love to have you have a look at me (laughs) for all the the blind spots that I have. 
Wow. Gonna end up in the same city. <laughs> Maybe I'll end up in Colombia. Yes. Um, That'd be great. Well, that's, and that's a good. That's a good point. I never stop working on me. I have all my uh, my coaches give me feedback, and we do uh, we do coaching workshops where the coaches just work, and I have them all give me feedback because uh, I you know don't if you don't constantly get feedback, it, you can get into pride and you can start to think you know you get stuck. Right. You got to everybody is human. Everybody is growing. And so people are like, oh, I'm broken. And I'm like, no, you're not broken. You're just growing. Yeah. <laughs> All and, growing. Nope. And that's what you said in the beginning, that, that evolution, that constant movement, that constant changes is, is, is of the essence. Yeah, it, it is. It's, we're, our nature is expanding. The first never stops expanding. We never stop expanding. That's our nature. Right. Even if it's like, let's say I'm going to renunciate and sit on a rock the rest of my life and meditate, right? That's my goal. You're right. still expanding. Ending. you're just expanding into consciousness into your internal world right and you're not just sitting there sitting still <laughs> right yeah. so what is a what is the like if if a guy or a woman um seeks your help and wants your help what is the what is the the transformation or say the result of the victory or the goal that you you feel confident that you could give people if they if they only let you help them um, well, the real victory, in my opinion, is not what you get in the outside world, although a lot of that comes like mm -hmm. better dates, more money, health. The real victory is just coming down to starting to really appreciate and enjoy your life uh -huh. the way it, the way it is without having to change it. And that sounds, that scares people when I say that, because if I learn to like my life the way it is without changing it, then I won't change it. And I'll be stuck like this forever and it scares them. Mm. Um, but the real key to happiness is liking your life exactly the way it is. Uh -huh. And when you reach that point, you're happy. Now, here's the caveat. That doesn't mean you won't change it. Of course. It, mm -hmm. That's what everybody gets scared of. Yeah. It actually, everything will change quicker and easier. Right. Uh, the nature of, like we just talked about, the nature of life is expansion. Uh -huh. So as you love your life more and more exactly the way it is, but the nature of your, your consciousness, at least in the physical body is to expand, mm -hmm. then you're going to start expanding easier and faster. It's like the, like a seed doesn't sit there and hate being a seed. It just loves me. It's, it's just magic or a seedling. Like it's just growing. It, it is a seedling. It doesn't sit there and go, I wish I was a tree. Right. No, it's the thing you could be, but it still continues to grow into a tree mm -hmm. and, you, and without resistance or without fighting at that point. You know, it just does its thing. Yeah. Like I say, yeah. life is life is perfect, and tomorrow life is perfect today, and tomorrow will be even better. Exactly. It's a constant uh, growing. Wow, that's great. Huh. And and what what are like what are the the people you love, like you love to work most with? They say, oh, these are the kind of people I want to I want to know more, and I I really want to work with. Well, I mean, I really love working with people that have a certain depth of, of emotional relationship to their body feeling because they're just easy to work with and they, they get all these realizations, they understand, they get it. And at the same time, the people who are like I was, who are really walled off and can't feel much, you know, when they, I get a lot of reward when they start to feel, when they go from not feeling to feeling and start learning to feel their, their bodies and their emotions and start really connect to, to life. So... Um, I don't, I, it's a tough question because on one hand, you know, you're working with somebody that's feeling that's just flying along is great, but then you don't get, you know, you need to get challenged by that guy. That's difficult once in a while, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because that's how you're going to get deeper with people and help people faster. And, and, um, right. so I, I, so I don't know if there's a particular favorite, um, I imagine there is, but it's not popping into my head right now. Right. Um, I love working with my coaches, to be honest. That's where I've really been lately is love uh -huh. watching because they, they, they ask questions because they've been doing it for a long time and they, they, they have a lot of skill. And so they ask questions at a different level. Right. And, um, when and they so you're, change, you're coaching the coaches in a way. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And when they change, they go out and start teaching what, what we figure out with them mm -hmm. to students immediately, like in the next workshop the next training, the next, uh, whatever they're doing, they, we can start passing that down. So if I can affect one coach through that coach, I can affect 
how many more people, you know, right. that's great. And what's on, what's on the horizon for a fearless man, like as a business, but also what you're offering and what's, what's on the horizon for say 2020 and beyond? Well, 2020 where we are really moving into other areas besides just dating. So uh, we just did our fearless man goal goals workshop seminar, excuse me. It's a large seminar, not large, but you know, there's 40, 50 people in the room, but um, it's a seminar on how, we do our goal setting process, how our coaches do it, how I do it, and then mm -hmm. teaching that to them. And then we mixed it with dating so that they could see how to apply it to dating and meeting women, um, mm -hmm. use it in so many other areas. Then the next one we're going to do is on, uh, we're going to be doing one with, with our financial guy on money and how to, how to better handle them. And the, really the mindset and beliefs and mental abundance around money, it's not going to have anything to do with dating. It's going to be all about creating an abundance mindset, which then again could affect money and could affect your day if you're creating an abundance mindset. Um, and really understanding what it, why our beliefs get in our way of making money almost more than skill sets. Because hmm. uh, a lot of people go out there and they get all the right coaching on how to start X business, but they still can't get it started because their beliefs are so jacked up. They're always getting in their own way. But they're right. like how they feel about themselves and all that. And then we're going to do uh, probably one on specifically on just uh, releasing it this year, which is releasing and, and how to shift your mindset for success, you know, in right. general and on any topic. Um, and we're, we're talking about having a workshop for women, specifically for women. So we're moving into these new arenas as I've got more coaches now. And, and the idea is uh, I'm going to have the coaches eventually take over the dating aspect and we're going to start uh -huh. going more into mainstream personal growth, you know, shifting right. your, your beliefs. Kind of and, and, it, and that's possible because at the core of it, you, you sense that the principle are, are, are the same. It's a, yes. a self-confidence and then translating into success in, into different areas. Yeah. 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 Like the, the key is I want the success to come out of a, a of a life fulfilled, you know, uh -huh. I want this, I don't want, I don't want to help people succeed like, oh, great, I made a million dollars, but I'm still miserable. Right. You know, or I got all these women, but I'm ultimately still not happy. And, right. and you can do that. You can literally go out there, work your ass off, and figure out how to make a lot of money. And in right. the end, just like, why the fuck do I have this money? I don't even care. And it's not, the money's not the problem. Then we blame the money. The money is not the problem. The money can set you free to go do all kinds of things. Yeah. It's, it's how you f ultimately feel about yourself and that you'll, and then if you still feel negative after you make money or after you get women, you could blame it on the very thing that you got. Suddenly the women are all bitches. The money's all bad because right. it's the root of all evil or whatever your story is, you know? So, so ultimately um, uh, for me, it comes down to helping people enjoy life and then be an expression of that and go right. and help out. We keep, and if we keep doing that, we keep getting our cup filled and we can, we can start, you know, filling other people's cups together and, and, uh, we all just get happy together. <laughs> the tide rises all the boats at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. I, I, the more, you know, I used to be so nervous about that. I had a little more of a lack mentality. And as I've grown a lot over the years, I just see the more you help others, the easier your life becomes. I mean, mm -hmm. Really. It's just, it's so obvious now, whereas before I was so blind to that. And it's just like, and it feels so good. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. I, I'm very interested in the, in the, in the fact that, that you are able to uh, raise, like say the confidence in someone almost like almost exclusively with, or with a lot of inner work. That's very, very interesting to me. And I'm, I'm, I'm pushing for it a little bit, like trying to understand it a little bit more if there's a sense of like, is it, it, if it's a decision to make, if it's a, a, a realization of self-worth and, uh, and really trying to understand where, where, that, where that confidence can come from, if not from, say, actions and from results. And uh, so I'm very, I'm very interested in that. I don't know if I if I'm asking you more about that, but I, I would love to ex experience that, how you do that. That's very interesting to me because when I, when I do coaching, um, I almost, I'm not, gonna, not completely, but I almost like brush that aside in a way, you know, and, 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 and really uh, stress the action itself because 
in in my experience the 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 confidence really comes from from the action and seeing that you're able to do it but then as you're talking i'm realizing like with women that i never thought that i had any trouble with women like i never thought women are an issue looking back i was a lot a, a lot worse than i am to today but i never thought like that it was that i had a, a problem so my kind of confidence in the sense of like it will be okay i will do okay comes before that you know it doesn't come i have a confidence now in terms of like i can deal with women i can date i can have relationships with women but there was a confidence that came before that and that's yeah that i'm wondering where that comes from and i'm i'm always thinking of i'm always thinking of my parents and i realize when i talk to to a lot of guys that have been blessed with parents that that raised me with a, a kind of like self confidence that comes from the fact that i don't ha i never had to prove myself to them to to get their love you know so That's yeah but i'm very i'm very interested in that in that because i'm confronted with it all the time like guys say oh uh, i i don't have the confidence i don't have the confidence and i wish i could have more of what you're teaching in the sense that I can help them there and then, independent of whatever we're going to do with women, to feel that way, you know? Well, everything, this, it's a great question because what I, I'm not going to say we don't uh, value action. We do value action a lot. We take a lot of action. But the action, um, we don't see the action as the source of the confidence, mm -hmm. as more the that it stimulates the insecurity so that we can mm -hmm. then, meditate and, or use a releasing process to release the insecurity and build more confidence. So uh -huh. the, the action is a, it creates a space for us to do more internal work. Uh -huh. So if I, if I walk up and just say hi to five people in the street today and my insecurities start coming up because I feel embarrassed because, you know, I, I, because it, maybe it's outside my comfort zone, um, a lot of stories come up and then I can use meditative and releasing processes to go inside and start to break all those stories up, especially uh -huh. on the spot do a little bit of it on the spot that's even better um, then on top of that if I can do a daily meditation where I am cultivating the endorphin f feeling endorphin based feeling of what it feels like to believe in myself love myself mm -hmm. to feel confident feel like a sexy fucking bastard and I meditate on that every day and I just sit with it for 10 minutes five minutes that's also going to have an effect on my subconscious mind because the subconscious mind responds to that endorphin response if you're not getting an endorphin response and you're just telling yourself you feel great it's not going to do shit right. matter of fact it could do the opposite it could cause problems because if i'm creating anxiety as i'm saying i'm believing in myself as a, i'm a sexy bastard and women love me and i'm creating anxiety around that then what could happen is i could actually amplify that anxiety over time right um got to be really cognizant of what your internal world's doing when you're doing this stuff so you know what you're amplifying because your emotional state's so important. Um, and then there are people that have, and we do have it happen, people that don't take a lot of action that do get a shift from the releasing. Um, we encourage the action, don't get me wrong. Right. But like, for example, one of our best coaches for, for going out and approaching women he got over his fear of approaching women just from meditating and releasing. You know, most people don't do that, but he actually did a ton of deep releases and uh, he had a huge um, response where he, he was releasing on the want for validation and want for approval. No, want for control, excuse me. And uh, he started laughing his ass off thinking about it because he had this huge realization in the moment. I can't control anybody. Matter of fact, I can't even make anybody like me. It's just they don't you really don't. And he just started laughing and laughing and laughing. And then when it was done, he just looked and he said, oh, I have no more. He had really almost had no more fear of wow. approaching. It was minimal, you know, minimal, but it's like kind of exciting, fun fear. And then, Incredible. I, I know you, you, um, because of that. Because of that. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, not everybody does it that way. A lot of people have to do it in slow progressions because we have so much buried, buried stuff. We go out, we maybe have them do some field exercise, and then we do a bunch of meditative releasing processes to break uh -huh. up what's going up. We get, a, we get a little bit of change, and then we do it again, a little bit of change, and over a few weeks and, and so forth, we, we start to see big shifts in their nervous system. Right. Uh, sometimes over a weekend or a week long, we can do a lot. I mean, if we've got you in a container for a week, dear God, we'll, we'll, you'll, you'll shift a lot. So, uh -huh. it's, Yeah, it's almost like energy work in a way, you know, shifting a lot on the inside. Yep. Wow. Yeah, yeah.
because the end, the outside world reflects to your inside, you know? Mm. So if you, if you should really open on the inside, the outside world will reflect that. Mm. Um, and you got to understand what you're feeling. A lot of guys, a lot of people today just don't know what they're feeling. Right. right. I think they do. We get them in the room and then we get them on camera and we start showing them how, what they're putting out to the world. And they're just shocked. Uh-huh. Like, I didn't, that. I didn't know I looked like that. I didn't know I act like that. They can't see it because there's so much disassociative uh, or identifications. There's just all kinds of stuff going on. So, right. and think about the world today, right? Think about it. It's crazy. We got, if you go back to hundred years, 150 years, oh my God, there, there, there was so little distraction in one given day. Mm. And now cell phones, billboards, um, TV, radio, uh, everything is coming at you. They say we get more information coming at us today than our ancestors before modern technology got in a year. We get more in one day than we do. So our critical minds are thick. Our thinking minds are running all the time. Back in those days, we were much more still inside. Right. You know? Yeah, all the information pulls you out in a way, you know? So yeah. from looking, yeah, I can see the total, you know, how important that is to do that, that inner work, you know, that's great. Yeah. Um, what is, what I are the, you are at without the inner work, my, my no. life would be an absolute master. Yeah. Tell us a little bit, I don't know how reserved you are about that, but I for sure would love to hear a little bit more about your story. And uh, you said you could go on for days and maybe we don't have the time for that, but I would love to hear a little bit more about your path and, and how sure. you've grown your capabilities to, to put them at the service of, of, of humanity or of other, other people? Yeah. Um, well, as a child, I was very, I was born into, I, I don't know the exact story as to what happened, but I know my mother um, was uh, in a lot of fights with my father who, and I don't know, she says there's physical violence. I've never seen any physical violence on him. And so I don't know. But I just know that they, from my from my sisters and stuff, there was a lot of screaming and yelling. And so I was, my first experience being born in this world was just a lot of screaming, yelling, fighting, hiding, running. My mom was always moving every year. There was a lot of anxiety. I was very sickly. I had a lot of gut issues. Uh, I didn't like to leave the house. I was very shy. And so this is kind of like my early upbringing. And I remember uh, growing up and I remember just hardly being super introvert, hardly talking to anybody, hating going to school, mainly because I didn't want to be around people. Huh. And a daydreaming to the point where I would just lose consciousness as to what the teacher was teaching. And she'd have to wake me back up. Brian, where she'd say to me, Brian, where do you go? And I was just like, what, what? I, I had no idea. Mm. And um, so as I graduate from high school, I'm just like, I got to change all this because I'm so antisocial. I'm never going to go anywhere in life. I'm, I'm going to be miserable and, and lonely. And I had a sociopathic stepfather who was a career criminal. Um, at one point we had the FBI following us and, you know, at the house and we wow. had my mom bipolar. So there was lots of screaming and yelling. It was a daily occurrence. That's why I numbed out so much. Mm-hmm. So I, I leave that world and I, and I decide I want to change myself. So I spend most of my twenties reading every book on personal growth I could find that had any effect on me. And, and it didn't do too much mm-hmm. other than I had lots of head knowledge. I understood all kinds of stuff, but I couldn't, apply it in my life mm. and it was driving me nuts i could share it with other people and they'd apply it and i couldn't understand why other people and i couldn't <laughs> wow. and so um i finally began to understand that real knowledge is body-based and not mental-based and that mm. took me a while it took me into my 30s to really understand that i needed to do more experiential work and um and what really set me apart was i was really just trying to figure it out i was lost i was going from place to place and I eventually quit all my jobs. I had an office job and I quit and I moved into this yoga community, kind of the yoga cult, <laughs> I call it. And I lived there for a year and it was just so crazy and chaotic and wild and, and all kinds of weird stuff was happening. And this guy moved in and his name was Daniel, an awesome dude. And uh, sorry, I shouldn't have used your real name, Daniel, but I don't think I care. Um, <laughs> And uh, he was just a natural with women. I was terrible. Every, I thought I was going to move into this place, and I was a super hippie, dippy yoga guy, and all the girls would like me. And none of the girls were attracted to me. They all wanted to help me fix myself, but none of them mm. wanted to. And they wanted to heal me. You know, I was, I was their pro- pet project at the yoga cult. And then this guy moves in because he has no place to go. And he's out on parole. He's just lost it. You know, he, he, he just got out of prison. He had no place to go. has no job. And he moves in there. 
and um, every girl wants them. Hmm. Every girl's like, Daniel, Daniel, you know, they're just freaking going nuts. So I asked him, I said, what is it that you're doing to get these girls? What do you do that's so special, you know? Because, you know, it doesn't happen to me. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I said, well, what do you do? And he goes, I just talk to them. Dude, they're girls. You're a guy. You just talk to them. You're, that's the way it works. And I was like, okay. That frustrated me even more. <laughs> and that's, that's not going to help me at all. So we moved out of this yoga uh, space and uh, got an apartment and I moved in with Daniel. Uh, probably not the wisest move considering he didn't have a job, but I, I wanted to spend time around him. Um, and I moved in with this other woman and uh, that lived with us. So it was three of us in a three bedroom apartment. And it was quite an experience for me because I would see Daniel go on to match and get a date after date, one girl after another. And and even though he didn't have much money, these girls would come over. They, he, he wasn't nice to them like I was. He, was he, could be, he could be tough. He could be sweet and nice. And he could be tough the next minute. He sets boundaries. He's not afraid to lose them. He'd tell them to leave if he didn't want, want them there. And girls liked him. Mm. And I was like, what the hell? He'd laugh at them sometimes and piss them off. And the next thing you know, they'd be having sex with him. <laughs> oh, my God. What's this guy doing? And um, that's about the same time that David D'Angelo started talking about cocky funny. Mm. I started listening to his descriptions of cocky funny. And I was like, this guy, Daniel, is naturally cocky funny. It's who he is. He doesn't even know he's cocky funny. He never even heard the term. It's just what he does. And I started to listen to the description and I was watching how he just played with the push pole so well. And, and so I spent time with him. And, and then shortly thereafter, I started to get better. And I started to study and I started to learn. And I kind of made it my laboratory. And it sucked because it was a lot of, you know, beating myself up at the end of the day because this didn't go right or I could nothing happened with this girl or this girl didn't like me, but I just kept going at it. And then I met this girl and she, uh, I was, I dated her for a month or two and I had never been so obsessed over a girl in my life. Mm -hmm. It was like every part of my body wanted to be around her 24 hours a day. And I'd never felt that like that before. And when we broke up, like I really blew it cause I was so insecure. Mm -hmm. And a lot of guys will probably relate to this. This is what really, I think, one of the pivotal things in my life, this moment. I'm sitting there dating this girl, and I don't know where she's at that night, you know, and I'm constantly obsessing over what she's doing. And the thought is, is how long till I blow this? How long until they ruin this? She's got to be with another guy. Why would she want to be with me? I know she's out with another guy tonight. And that's mm -hmm. all I could think about. And I sat there and I watched my thoughts. And then I, and I watched how obsessive they were and I could see how obsessive they were. Mm. And I slowly created this reality where she ended up having to leave me because I was just pushing, you know, and obsessive. Mm. And, and she didn't talk to me for a year after that because I pissed her off so bad. And, but it broke my heart worse than any other breakup in my life. And it was such a short relationship, mm. but it was the pivotal one. I sat there for months, so depressed. And I thought, how can one human being I've only known for a month or two cause this much depression to me? This is insecurity. This is something about me deep inside that's hurt. Mm -hmm. And I knew that. And that began the journey. I have got to build real confidence. I've got to build real self-love because I can't live the rest of my life like this. Mm -hmm. That was a big part of what created wow. the journey. And so I started signing up for workshops, seminars, looking for coaches and I did get coaches in the dating industry, but I, I quickly moved out of the dating industry and started finding more and more mentors outside the dating industry. I was already a hypnotherapist at this time, but I needed more and more mentors that understood real human dynamics. And they just weren't at that time in the dating industry. They were all about how to pick up girls, and but right. none of it was about how to really love yourself. And, and so um, I finally ended up with a teacher, Carl, for four years. And I, he just, he tore me down and rebuilt me for that whole, and I was with him for that four years. He was, I was, I was in class all the time and it was a lot of hard work and he was not always nice. He was very brutal sometimes and very real and very honest. And, and, uh, but that was the basis of, of who I am today was that stripping away and rebuilding process. Right. And he taught me all about feeling, being in the body, getting into relationship to your emotions and, and, That's uh, a great story. I'm, I'm sure that a lot of guys can, you know, relate to that, you know, this, going through that as well. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, Trying to find a way to love themselves, you know. And, uh, yeah, for anyone. I mean, I'm listening to and thinking, like, 
all the, the ways I could grow, you know, it's just very, very interesting and good to see how it comes from your own, like seeking of, of capabilities, you know, growing yourself. Yeah, it, it really does. Um, you know, as I get older and older and my life gets easier and more relaxed and more beautiful, it's really, a, I just see that it's a reflection of me liking myself more mm -hmm. than I ever. Mm -hmm. And it's well, so simple. But. Yeah. If like um, the, the people that are listening right now and, uh, and, and resonate with the story and, and what you have on offer, what, what kind of offerings you have right now for people? Well, the simplest thing that I would say, you know, this is um, totally free. Just go on YouTube, the, YouTube, uh, the Fearless Man uh, channel on YouTube, you know, youtube.com, the Fearless Man. We put up two, at least two videos a week, sometimes more, lots of content. And if you really like what's there, then, you know, there's, the, 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 there's a blog on the webpage, thefearlessman.com. Uh, that has a lot of written content. And then we have a lot of um, stuff we, uh, the, the, you know, the email, we're giving away stuff all the time. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff to give away. You know, we just put out, we really believe in creating value out there. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody really wants to get more involved, come out to a Fearless Man Live if you want to do a live event because they're, they're, the, they're an easy live event, they're in a seminar setting, nothing really, you don't have to do anything intense if you don't want to, just learn and we have a lot of fun in those. We just did one last weekend and had a huge crowd and it was just, it was full of energy and, and right. life because you really get into them. I, I love speaking and I love even getting people emotionally wrapped up in them. Um, if you want to, and, and we have lots of online content programs online people can learn about. So I'm not going to tell people what they should do. I'm going right. to tell them explore, go explore. If you want to learn more, get out to one of these events. We do have, a lot of in-depth week-long intensive coaching too uh, for people that want to take it that far for people that mm -hmm. just want to have a peruse of that that people that want some low-cost online online content we have that so what I'm trying to do with this is just I want I, I believe that uh, you know life comes back and gives back to you when you mm -hmm. when you help really help and so the free content is to really help the masses and for people that want to uh, really dive in and do deep work, we have that too. And it's and and, and our, our exclusive content is is uh, is not cheap, but it's it's well 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 worth it in my opinion. Uh, um, and you just decide, right? You know, well, that's great. Hey, I'm I'm very happy, Brian, that I, I get I got to listen and that I hear a bit uh, uh, your story is very touching and uh, and also. You know the the work that you're doing, and I can sense uh, uh, how important it is. And I also in installed in me the desire to experience it. I would really like to, yeah, I would really like to experience it because, uh, uh, yeah, because I'm. We're gonna end up in the same city sometime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you moved out of Bucharest. I don't know if you've been back, but I've I've, ba I've been back this summer and I saw Zan and uh, but it's been I go for short short times now, but I go back there no. once in a while. So I'll yeah. be there. I will be there in Bucharest or somewhere in Eastern Europe, but mostly Bucharest around all of May, probably. Okay. Um, maybe some of June. So if you're in the area, let me know. I definitely want to get out to Columbia at some point too. I need to get out to Hawaii. My brother just moved there. I want to spend time with him. Yeah. Minnesota, his dad. Columbia is just because it's Columbia. Um, <laughs> yes. I'm always go there. Um, or not really. You know, it's, it's, it, I don't, wouldn't say always. It was after I got to know Yaz Blady. She's uh, mm. awesome. Yaz, you know, a lot of people have seen her on my channel. She's Colombian, and it's just made me think, yeah, Colombia would be an interesting place to visit. So. Uh, what, are you, but, uh, are you, what happened with her? Are you still together? Or? No, no, no. She, we, we went in different direct. We, she's an amazing human being, but we didn't want the same things for our future. And so uh -huh. you, know, you, you get along with somebody really well, having a different... Um, desires as to what you want out right. of the future some people try to force that stuff and you can't force it mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you got to let go because right. you know i would have to give up her goals or i'd have to give up my goals you know? mm -hmm. that's just not right um but uh well, i still respect her i still love her to death she's an awesome human being great well, all the links you said, I'll put them in the notes. You can see them in the notes underneath people. And so you can find that way. You can explore yourself, feel his man and the work of, of Brian and get in contact with him. Um, thank you very much.
Brian, for uh, Beijing to take the time. <laughs> My Asian would be. Asian would be. Beijing. Beijing. Yeah, there you go. You got it. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time. And, and I'm happy that I got to explore your world a little bit more. And it got me really interested in, in that inner work. You know, it comes to me and I would love to experience it. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to reach out. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I hope we see each other soon. Yeah. I hope so too. I was uh, it was a pleasure doing the interview. I very much enjoyed it, and um, and yeah, I'll, you know what? It, let me know when it comes out, and I'll, I'll, I want to make sure it gets out to my list too, and, and uh, put it out to them. So. All right, thank you, awesome. Brian. Right here.